For USCfootball.com, I'm Jack Smith, joined by Chris Trevino for instant analysis from USC's Tuesday practice of Minnesota Week. Now, Chris, you weren't at the Wisconsin game. I heard you got married, so just wanted to say, first of all, big congratulations on the wedding. I did not get married. Do not believe anything that anyone has said about that. I was just attending a wedding. I was not married. Imaginary girlfriend turned imaginary wife. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Imaginary ring, imaginary bouquet, imaginary tux, all of it. Well, you didn't get to see the Wisconsin game, which means your return to practice today was your first time seeing the team since, I believe, last Wednesday. So I want to say, what were your practice observations from today, and did it feel good to be back covering football? It did good. It did feel good to be back. I mentioned this, that this is the first game I haven't been there to cover since 2020, so it's been a while. So I did feel out of my routine. I even forgot my Ghost Notes notebook, so uh, terrible, but... That's what we have phones for, to keep ghost notes. But, yeah, a lot of actual stuff was interesting about today's walkout, mainly because of the players that were finally practicing after being gone for so long. First off, Killian O'Connor, as you remember, was carted off in the Utah State game with the knee injury. He was back in full pads. He looked like a full participant as well. Makai Lemon obviously t- was carted off or walked off and went to the hospital after the scary Michigan hit he suffered, uh, concussion protocol. He was back in full pads as well so that was a big one for usc and then carson tabarachi the tight end who we haven't seen since the end of spring this past spring where he suffered a serious neck injury and then suffered a foot injury so he's just been held back by a litany of energies of injuries excuse me but he was back in full pads and he looked full goal as well and he looked pretty pretty good out there as well that's some big boost for the usc's tight end depth room he is an older player hasn't played a lot but he is still a redshirt sophomore a former linebacker, but you know he is an interesting guy in that H-back position. He brings a lot of athleticism and catching ability to this team. He also played running back out of high school. So three guys back that are very key for their depth rooms, for their respective rooms in terms of depth, excuse me. Yeah, we also did see Akili Arnold practicing during the media period that we got to watch, and he was one of a couple players Lincoln Riley was asked about. In terms of their injury status, it was he and Eric Gentry, and, and Riley quickly said that they're both progressing, but they're questionable going into this week. So it seems like a pretty early call that it, I would say more likely than not Akili Arnold plays compared to Eric Gentry because Arnold was a full participant, and we saw him playing with that first-team defense during practice, but both of them are questionable going into the game. Yeah, it definitely feels like Akili Arnold will be back this week or at least maybe they'll slowly insert him you know Zion Brand, Bryson Straw played a lot last week with the Keely Arnold out so I would expect the Keely Arnold to be fully active for this game and even start this game but they might rotate a little bit more Bryson Straw and Zion Branch who did play well in the Wisconsin win. The other interesting thing, Chris, is because the Trojans have now played four games, you show up to the tunnel and you're wondering, is anyone going to come out in a different jersey number, either signaling that they're redshirting or not redshirting? Rajon Davis did not come out in his number nine, and the news has been broken online that he will be redshirting this season. Lincoln Riley was asked about it and did give a response. And the other interesting thing was Jide Abasiri, who normally has been wearing a different number because he's been playing on the scout team and kind of replicating other players on other teams. He was wearing 97 today, his number, and that's maybe signaling that he won't redshirt after the staff maybe thought he was going to to start the year. I'll start with Rajon Davis. Obviously, he is a player that has been sort of a fan favorite among USC fans. Just a really talented player out of moderate high school, a powerhouse that just hasn't been able to see the field. You know, you, you pounded the table for him under the last coaching staff. Like, you can't find a way to get this guy such good coverage skills, such good athleticism. But the translation was, you know, I think he was still learning to play the role of middle linebacker. It's not a true position that he played in high school, more of an edge rusher. So him taking this red shirt, we've been told he w- intends to stay at USC. This isn't a Bear Alexander situation where, where we expect him to leave after the, uh, the season is over. He intends to stay at USC. He is a senior. He's going to be taking that red shirt. And he was a contributor on special teams. I think that's going to hurt a little bit. USC's been pretty good on coverage and stuff like that. But, you know, it, it, it's an interesting rule. I mean, even Lincoln Riley mentioned that he, he wished the red shirt rule would change. But for the second week in a row, Jack, we have a new Trojan who is opting to red shirt. Yeah, this one may be a little, uh, less of a surprise because Rajon Davis hasn't been playing very much at all on defense. I think he's only played against Utah State, unless he got in late this week against Wisconsin. But yeah, you're right, he has made a couple impactful special teams tackles, so that's a loss for USC on the, on the kick coverage unit. 
one thing about Bear Alexander, we didn't see him at practice today. We were told that obviously he was redshirting last week, but uh, Tony Jones, who, who handles a lot of things and is a father figure in Bear's life, both of them were saying he intends to stay at USC. He wants to practice with the team. He's not going to be leaving practice. We kind of got our answer. We didn't see him out there today, and Lincoln Riley, once again, like he did on last Thursday, didn't really have a comment on the situation. Right. He said, we've already said everything that we wanted to say, so there is no update. But yeah, did not see Bear Alexander come out with the team. Didn't see him in another jersey. Didn't even see him out there in general. He, he just did not exist in the context of today's practice. So yeah, it doesn't seem like Bear Alexander is going to be a contributor for this team for practice. But again, it's just one day. Maybe he'll come out tomorrow, but I highly doubt that. And then the other note on Jaday Abasiri, he was wearing his normal number. Now remember, Jaday is from Minnesota, and he was formally committed to the Gophers before he flipped to USC, got on got on campus late for an official visit after an offer, bam, 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 USC was able to get his commitment. So a little homecoming for him. I would be shocked if he didn't come on this trip, just, you know, getting to play in front of his parents and his family and friends. And, you know, by the fact that he's wearing his actual jersey tells me that he is prepping for this defense. So I think we can expect to see Jaday Abasiri. I believe this would be his, his second game. Uh, played at Utah, played against Utah State. So I think he's going to be out there making his road game debut. I just, it's just a hunch, just a hunch. It would be kind of a, a home game for him, obviously being in that stadium, a place where he's from and and previously committed to. He certainly has the body to take over on that defensive front. He's six five, I think two ninety. He's got the size that you're looking for as a defensive tackle. We didn't see him play a single snap though this past week against Wisconsin, when a lot of people thought he'd be part of the equation. When Bear Alexander was redshirting, Devin Tompkins took most of the snaps, and USC also rotated less often uh, with Bear Alexander out. So we did not see Abasiri play against Wisconsin. Yeah, we're not saying. Abbasir is going to start this game just because it's Minnesota, but I would not be shocked if he didn't get a couple of key snaps, throw him out there for a series or two. You know, he is super strong. That is kind of a, uh, not, no pun intended, his strength right now. Obviously, he's pretty raw as a prospect. That was the knock on him at, coming out of high school, but just the athleticism, the body type, the strength, it's all there. Once he gets it down, you know, what they're trying to do on defense and understanding the defense, and Lincoln Riley's mentioned that he's developed quite nicely since he's arrived in the spring. It's been huge for him to get in the spring, so I think we're going to see, out, see him out there getting some key minutes, not just garbage time, but again, that's just a hunch. So that was a lot that we got to see during the practice period in the walkout, and that's good because there wasn't a whole ton that went on during interviews today. We talked to Lincoln Riley, Miller Moss, Jonah Monheim, kind of the usual suspects on Tuesday, as well as a couple offensive linemen with Mason Murphy and both of the tight ends, Kate Eldridge and Walker Lyons. Is there anything you can kind of sink your teeth into and, and kind of say is the most memorable things that were said during interviews today? You know, I was, I was listening to both the tight ends talk uh, Kate Eldridge and Walker Lyons and just how highly they spoke of Lake McCree obviously down injured in that Michigan game will be out for a couple weeks but just talking about him and how his presence is still there with the team you know he's out there at practice with them he's in the meeting rooms he's even lifting with them at 5 a.m in the morning he is around and he is getting after it to quote uh, Walker Lyons he's not taking his foot off the gas and even though he's injured so he is always around he's giving them plenty of words of encouragement you know Cade being the older guy in that room stepping up and then Walker Lyons who's found himself as kind of the number two tight end and just plenty of encouragement and helping him build up his confidence which we saw him you know he made a couple big catches in that uh, Wisconsin get, uh, game got that big first down catch so you seeing Walker Lyons get a little more confident and you know Lake is right behind them kind of bolstering those guys up. Yeah, Miller mentioned, too, that Lake's obviously a great player. He was asked whether the offense has to change anything without him, and he said you never really want to lose a great player from an offense, but obviously they have, and they're they're rebounding from that and trying to figure out other ways to play without him. Uh, but just kind of echo the same thing the tight end said, that he's a great player and, and a weapon for USC's offense that they certainly do miss right now. I asked Lincoln Riley about Quinton Joyner because obviously he's been so good when he's touched the football. He's rushing for almost eight yards a carry, but just as it doesn't have the same amount of carries as Woody Marks has this season because Woody Marks has been really good. But then we also saw Brian Jackson cut into those carries a little bit this week. He got four, Joyner got six, and almost turned it into 50 yards rushing. So I asked him, you know, what has he seen from Quinton Joyner so far this year and whether there's anything he needs to do to see more snaps and more touches. He said, obviously, they're really excited about what he's done with the ball in his hands, but they'd like to see him improve and continue to improve because he has made strides in playing without the football in his hands. Right, and that's mainly, you know, pass blocking. You know, USC has struggled the last two games in protecting Miller Moss. He's been under a lot of duress and taken some big hits. So if you're going to go in there as a running back, you have to be able to protect because they, they need all the protection they can get. So 
that's you know goes back to what Travis Dye said: no blocky, no rocky. And Woody Marks is their best pass blocker, so they don't really want to take him off the field that much. And you know there was a moment where Quinton kind of whiffed on a block in the Wisconsin game. So those are the kind of things. If you want to carry the ball more, you have to do those little things like be a complete running back, and that includes pass blocking. So. Quinn's obviously getting more confidence running the ball, but now he just needs to find that confidence as a pass blocker. You know, you have grown men. He's only a redshirt freshman. You have grown men bearing down on you to get to your quarterback. Can't let that happen. So once we see the more development there, then we're really going to see more more touches flourish for uh, number zero. I feel like we haven't gotten a quotable like no blocky, no rocky this year. There's just there's not as many Travis dies on this team that are super vocal with the media and spin things into jokes and infuse their personality into their answers. It kind of feels like this year we're getting a lot less of that than the past couple years. To be to be fair, it's hard to follow up no blocky, no rocky. Yeah, that yeah. that's like that's like a that's peak. M- that's, peak. that's a Mount Rushmore kind of quotable about the team. So you know. No blocking, no rocky. Iconic. So kind of hard to follow that up. Yeah. Are there any other main things that stood out to you today? I would say, you know, listening to Mason Murphy, he kind of emphasized that Josh Henson has been really pounding the table, you know, coming off the Michigan game about fundamentals. Fundamentals, technique, technique, technique. That's kind of what he's been harping on. And just every day they're trying to perfect at least one thing moving forward. So obviously Josh Henson, offensive line have a lot of pressure on them because, you know, as we said, Miller has been under duress. Obviously they were improved coming from Michigan to this Wisconsin game, but he was still taking a lot of pressure in his face. Still still took some big hits. So it's got to get better. You got Penn State coming. Minnesota's got a top five defense. They're going to be they're going to be gunning for Miller, and then you know they have to improve moving forward. So a lot is on them moving forward. So yeah, just listen to him talk about how you know Henson told them that they have only scratched the surface of how good of an offensive line they can be, and that's something they have to believe in, and they're trying to believe in as they move forward because they need to keep developing, need to keep getting better. They got a lot, a lot of young guys on that 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 offensive line: Alani Noah, Amos Talalele. And then Elijah Page as well. So they have to keep growing and keep believing that they're going to get better because they need them to. Yeah, when asked about improvements, Lincoln Riley kind of gave your average coach answer. He said all three of the offensive linemen did a lot of really good things. That's kind of you know his answer to a lot of questions about guys. He doesn't like to get in to you know one week specifics for guys. He said Elijah Page had things that he didn't do well against Michigan that he did well against Wisconsin, and he kind of parlayed that into saying the same things about Alani Noah and Amos Talalele. But that'll basically do it for instant analysis today. Not a very packed day in the interview segment, but certainly a lot of things seen before and during the practice period. Period we got to watch, and we'll see if there's any more news that pops up tomorrow before USC heads to Minnesota. But for Chris Trevino, I'm Jack Smith. Thanks for watching Instant Analysis. Make sure you're checking out uscfootball.com for more.